Great, thank you. Thanks for being here, everybody. Uh, the board is exiting a executive session uh, that we are in at six o'clock to discuss uh, matters made confidential by FERPA. And um, so we, we did already say our Pledge of Allegiance. Um, so we can just continue on here. Um, and we were all present at the executive session as well, Ms. Potts. Thank you. Uh, okay, so the next Board of Education meeting will be held on December 7th at 7 p.m. right here in the uh, small gym. And um, I will turn it over to Dr. Benante to give us his update. Thank you, Jen. I have just a few updates prior to our special presentation. Uh, it's a fun time of the year where we get to see many of our student athletes uh, prepare for their postseason competition, and we had a great send-off last week, last Friday, for our boys and girls cross-country teams uh, who are on their way to states, respectively, and that's an important Haldane tradition. Whenever one of our teams, our groups go off to states, uh, the kids send them off. So, Luke, what'd you think? It was, a, it was a soggy day, but I think we made some good accommodations. Yeah, I think despite the, the weather still indoors, I think everyone was able to still come together, and I think it was a good time. Yeah, so it was high school focused. Usually we yeah. have the elementary students come out, but it was uh, amidst a downpour. So uh, we kept it just to the high school. And, and Luke, you did quite well. I, uh, again, I, I made reference to it prior to the meeting, but I did follow up with uh, your results and the team's results. It seemed like the, the boys' team finished eighth. I don't think the girls' team had enough runners to qualify as a team competition. It was just uh, individual results. And if I saw correctly, you were the top finisher for the boy runners, yeah, or male runners at Haldane. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> Congratulations, Luke, Thank you did a great job. Thank you. Uh, football had a tough loss uh, to Tuckahoe in the sectional final, but for reasons that Mr. Cowan can explain, our football team still goes on to the state tournament. I'll leave that to Dan to cover. I'm not quite clear on it myself, but it was a great game, uh, 48 to 40. It was a long football game. Uh, one of the longer football games I think I've ever been to, uh, just in terms of length of time, but a great atmosphere. Uh, um, Great number of fans from, from Haldane, also from Tuckahoe, and a great season thus far uh, by our boys football team. And you always follow the teams that, that beat your team in the state tournament. I just made note that the boys soccer uh, team had a great uh, sectional final game um, against Hamilton, and Hamilton ended up winning the state championship, I noted last weekend. So um, I think it just goes to show uh, how strong our boys team was. Uh, just two other updates from me. I just wanted to make reference in case you haven't seen them. The Lower Hudson Council of School Superintendents released a statement uh, last week, which was picked up in the media regarding uh, test to stay policy for COVID, uh, which is something we've uh, I've mentioned to the board before, um, and also a mask metric or a series of metrics that could be utilized in making uh, determinations at a school or a district level in um, uh, in determining which uh, restrictions uh, to continue to impose or when the time would be appropriate to perhaps uh, no longer require something like mass or uh, re further reduce distancing inside of schools, which is all tied to now the fact that uh, vaccinations are available for all school age children. So uh, that was, a, actually I said it was a statement, it was a letter to Governor Hochul. Uh, Governor Hochul has been quite responsive and has demonstrated to develop a really effective rapport uh, with various bodies uh, that represent public education in New York State. We'll see what comes of that, but those are two items that I know we've discussed in the past. And then also I just wanted to reference, if you haven't reviewed it yet, uh, for our board that um, NISBA and NISCUS, um, as well as a couple other organizations, had uh, released a joint statement regarding equity, diversity, and inclusion uh, that I just think is an important reference point as we've had discussions regarding such here at the board level and will continue to uh, this school year. So I just wanted to draw your attention to that in case you haven't had an opportunity to review it. I think it'll be an important point of reference when we meet in retreat in January. With that, I would like to introduce Mr. McGrarty. Uh, I think there he is. Uh, Mr. McGrarty is going to provide our first arts update 
uh, for Haldane, and this was at the request of the board in our planning earlier this school year. And while Dan gets set up, I just uh, wanted to give the board a sense of the parameters that I provided Dan uh, so he could have a good framework to work with. And so I asked Dan to provide an overview, just a broad overview, on elements related to our arts program, uh, specifically our visual and performing arts programs here at Haldane. Um, I did ask Dan, as I ask all of our uh, administrators when they report, try to keep it to about 15 minutes uh, with plenty of time for questions and answers. And that's a lot, um, or, or there's a lot that Dan could potentially present. So I know he had to really limit some things that uh, he may have wanted to talk about, but I always said the bo there's, there's plenty of time in the future for follow-up conversations and uh, discussion. So uh, there'll be time for questions and answers as well. And with that, uh, Mr. McGrady, welcome and thank you. And I'm gonna pull your presentation up on the screen. Oh, you got it. <laughs> thank you. Um, first of all, thank you uh, to the board for inviting me this evening to present, and thank you to our school administration for supporting the arts every day here at school. So first, uh, just an overview of who we are. So the arts department, as we define it, is the music and visual arts, as well as the extracurricular drama program. The staff consists of Angela Branco, who teaches visual art for K through seven, Katie Boonshoft, who teaches visual art K through, or eight through 12, as well as supervises our art club. Uh, myself, who serves as the arts coordinator. I teach general music and digital music for K through eight, as well as oversee the elementary school musical production. William Rich, his first year at Haldane, teaches chorus grades four through 12, as well as high school studio production and Jessica Stein, who teaches band for grades four through 12, as well as our jazz band. In the extracurricular areas, we have Christian Hoolan, who teaches our Blues Devils, which is our school rock band. Jenna Isabella, who oversees our middle school drama production, along with Rebecca Masbeck, although this will be her first year doing that. Um, Andrea McHugh, who oversees the high school musical, as well as high school drama, and Martha Mekalakos, who directs musical, directs our musical, directs our drama, and directs our acapella Blue Notes group. We have a relatively uh, new department here at Haldane, bringing a lot of um, experience. So what we offer at the elementary level, um, so each elementary class will see music or art once a week at a fixed time. When the students are in fourth grade, they have the option to join chorus or band or both. Chorus and band both meet before school. Chorus meets one day a week before school. Band meets two days a week before school as well as one pullout lesson during the week. Uh, after school, extracurricular, we have the elementary musical production which is about two to three times a week for a portion of the school year. Our last full production was the Aristocats Junior. At the middle school level, we have sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade art, which meets quarterly, so in other words, every day for 10 weeks out of the school year. General music for sixth grade is the same, a quarterly class. We have sixth grade concert band and seventh and eighth grade symphonic band, which meet every other day as well as a pullout lesson during the week. We have sixth grade chorus and seventh and eighth grade chorus, which also meet on alternating days. We also offer a digital music class for seventh and eighth grade. All of these classes uh, can be taken to fulfill the requirement to take a music and an art in seventh or eighth grade. We also have a middle school production. Uh, recent productions were Circus Olympus and The Importance of Being Earnest. At the high school visual art level, we have Studio Art One and Studio Art Two, which are semester long courses. So if you take both, you're essentially taking the course all year long. Same goes for drawing and painting and ceramics and sculpture. We also have advanced art one and advanced art two and an independent study for our visual art. For extracurricular, we have an art club, which is mainly student led and our dramatic performances, such as the Greek Trilogy from last year and the upcoming Sense and Sensibility. Tickets available now. For high school music, we have choir and symphonic band meeting during the day, as well as studio music production course. In the extracurricular area, we have our jazz band, our Blue Notes, which is an a cappella group, Blues Devils, which is our rock band, and the musical. And the last full production was Fiddler on the Roof. So a few highlights of our program. Uh, like I said, we have a 
relatively small department, but that allows us to really have a team approach to things like aligning our curriculum and ensuring that we have a vertically aligned curriculum. We're able to have those conversations. We're also able to have those conversations with other departments, such as having a recent example is having our participation rubric in the music department match and align with the PE participation rubric to provide that consistency with students. So that's a really highlight of the small staff that we have. That department approach also gives us some opportunities to discuss how to incorporate the Haldane Essentials and the strategic plan into our curriculum. And it's been really helpful to have that team approach to such a you know, hefty um, task. We have a strong partnership with the Haldane Arts Alliance. We have really strong rec uh, recruitment for band and choir at the elementary level. We have a lot of enrollment. We have a digital music space, which is great. We offer a music in the parks trip at middle school, which uh, is quickly becoming a tradition and students are really excited to hopefully bring it back this year. And we have a lot of enrollment in uh, NISMA, all county and area, all state. Haldane, of course, also has a really strong reputation for its dramatic and musical productions. For visual arts, um, student art is, off is featured often at the Garrison Arts Center exhibits. It's also featured at Food Town and that's for grades K through 12. We have 100% involvement of art students in the elementary and high school art shows. They're also planning to have a first ever K through 12 art show this year. Um, and the art shows are relatively new to Haldane. Um, within the last couple of years, our visual arts teachers have really started that tradition. We participate in the Garrison Art Center High School Mentor Program. We have an art club, which as I said, is mostly student led. And we have events such as the Arts Alive, which really allow us to involve um, the great local artists that we have in the community and being able to use their expertise and give the students um, exposure to those, those different arts. It's a really great thing. So these are some considerations to how our program is running, and some of them rise to the level of recommendations for future uh, effects on our programming. The first being uh, an auditorium. Here we are in the gym, which uh, had to cut play practice short today, as well as the six basketball teams competing for space to practice. Um, so an auditorium is definitely a recommendation for improvement to our programming. Along with that, I'd say, is the storage that goes along with it, such as our risers, which are in the hallway, such as our set pieces, which have to be completely struck after each performance, uh, which could save time and money for our drama department. We also don't have a designated choral space. We currently use two rooms between the three teachers, um, sometimes using this space as well, competing with the PE during the school day. Um, so some upgrades to our existing auditorium would include um, painting our stage floor black, as well as having access and safe access to our lighting fixtures, both on the floor and on the stage as well as having a designee for maintenance to that technology up in the tech booth as well as the stage area. And our shared Mac lab, which is currently being used by digital art, but is, or by digital music, but is free to be used by the whole school and hopefully will be used by digital art soon. Um, I'd say it's in its midlife as far as technology goes and currently does not have enough to accommodate the average class size at Haldane. So expanding it as well as having a plan for maintenance for that tech space. So considerations for scheduling, currently our three buildings all operate on three different schedules, which impacts our programming since our entire department consists of what we call shared staff. In other words, we're all in teaching in two or three buildings or working on two or three schedules. So it affects what we're able to offer and when. So some of those changes to schedules that could allow changes in our programming could be um, offering elite ensembles during the school day, as well as offering our elementary ensembles during the school day. We could expand the number of electives that we offer, such as theater, art history, photography, piano, music theory. Um, those last couple music offerings could be expanded with expanding our choral position from 0.8 to 1.0 FTE. And I will point out that Art history has run in the past before through the history department, and theater has run through the English department, just not through the arts department. 
Um, we also have need in the area of tech support, as I mentioned before, for our tech booth. And in general, um, our performances have relied on the very generous volunteers uh, and their expertise for our performances. However, relying on volunteers also creates a need when they're not available. So um, it's something to consider for future programming that could have an effect on our drama performances. We have a couple of student perspectives to offer, and I know that the sound is not uh, very loud, but we'll do our best. Hi, I'm Molly Siegel. I'm a senior, and um, one of the things that I really enjoy about art class this year is just having a lot of freedom creatively with all the projects that we're given. And I feel like especially this year, we've been given a lot more um, material to work with and like better quality stuff. So it's made making things more enjoyable. And um, I think just next year and like in the coming years, just having more opportunities for like, you know, putting art around the school would be cool. Um, you know, there are a lot of cool murals kind of placed randomly, but more of those would be nice, I think. Hi, I'm Laura Flesano. I'm a freshman, and some things I enjoy about band is how much fun it is and how we get to just hang out and play music together. And uh, even with COVID, we still get to play music and how this year we got the funding for the in playing masks so we can play indoors as well. And so some other things I would like to see more in band would be like maybe some more people and different like opportunities, like how in middle school there was uh, the Six Flags trips to play. That would be really cool to have more opportunities like that and some other things. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Laurel. Hi, my name is Conrad White. I am a junior at Haldane High School, and I'm part of the Haldane Drama Club, and I am in the high school choir. One of the main things that I've always enjoyed about the um, arts club and the drama department specifically is the amount of connection and community that goes along with the program that really connects students from any year. It gives everybody an opportunity, whether you're a freshman or a senior, to shine when you're on stage, whether or not you have a backstage part or if you're a lead role. There's many different opportunities for you to work behind the scenes. You can always be part of the stage crew. There's a lot of opportunities to be stage manager. The light and crew tech have been working alongside us alongside with us for years and years, and even though they're still in the background, it's a more prevalent part than most people would ever assume. So we're really grateful to get those types of opportunities because even if you're not affiliated with the stage, you can still work in whatever way you'd like. The choir has always been a unique type of group to work with because there's a lot of differentiation between the music that you choose um, it's almost always prevalent between every member of the choir because we're such a small but tightly knit group. It makes it a lot easier for us all to work together and figure out what sound fits us all best. Um, so yeah, in prevalent with both, with both groups is just an enormous amount of community that makes it really easy to work together as a group. And questions. Thank you so much. Not so fast. <laughs> no questions? I hit it all? Uh, yes, Meg. Remind me a little bit about um, the art, art is quarterly in middle school. Say that again? Art is quarterly. So it's an Art is quarterly at middle school for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, yes. And is music the same? Sorry, so um, music for 6th grade is the same. It's quarterly. And 7th and 8th grade, um, they have the option to take band, chorus, or digital music which fulfills the requirement. That requirement for art is fulfilled within the seventh grade and eighth grade art, quarterly art class. I don't have a question, but um, I'd love to just take an opportunity to thank the um, arts department for all that they do. Thank you. Uh, looking at you know the slide as you're listing all of the amazing things that the department is doing, not just 
during the school day, but outside of the school day, um, it's really impressive and it's great to see it all uh, in one spot like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it really speaks to the, the gravity of how much the department contributes to the community and to the district. Um, and I was also wanted to take the opportunity to share that I was really impressed by the arts department's work during the COVID um, um, pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing you guys on the lawn uh, teaching music mm -hmm. and seeing Miss Branco coming in and out of the school with an art cart um, every day, mm -hmm. uh, not just when it was nice out, not just because it was fun to go outside one day, but literally every day. Mm -hmm. um, it was just very impressive and a testament to the department in its creativity mm -hmm. um, to just keep making it work. Um, so. Thank you for all that you do. Um, and I think the comments that you made about scheduling are really, um, are, are current for us. You know, it's something that Dr. Benante has talked about, uh, is, is looking at scheduling, um, even doing like a scheduling audit to bring somebody in who's an expert in this mm -hmm. field to just look at our scheduling and say, how can we do this better? Because, um, you know, it, if the this, this schedule, the, the crossing of different staff and um, going between different buildings, it, you know, doesn't just affect the arts department, mm -hmm. it affects a lot of teachers. And it's definitely something that Dr. Benante has brought up as a concern. And I know the board is interested in uh, looking at that area and seeing what we can do mm -hmm. to, to make improvements. So um, I appreciate you bringing that up again. Um, yeah. I think it's, um, it is something that we, we know we need to look at. Mm -hmm. um, and one more thing I'll say is just looking at how the arts department is constantly tasked with teaching so many different grade levels in one day <laughs> um, is a huge effort and it's a huge undertaking. Um, and I applaud you for the work that you do well, thank you so much for your kind words, and I'll pass it along to the rest of the department Please for do. sure. Please do, yeah. <laughs> I had one last question, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, could you give a brief, really brief description on Arts, Arts Alive? Is so, that just fourth and fifth? Art, Arts Alive is for fifth grade, and I it was um, started, I think we have Corey here. Uh, how many years ago? started more than five years ago. More than five, yeah. Seems like much more than that, but um, it's, uh, it's, it's um, so essentially it's a day for the, our fifth graders to interact with some local artists in the area and they're networked through the Arts Alliance and what, what used to be the Arts Booster Club to find those artists and bring them in and essentially they do just an hour long workshop, sometimes an hour, sometimes 45 minutes depending on what it is and the students get to choose what workshop they want to do based on their interests and I mean we've had a huge variety of things we've had obviously dance and drumming and singing and songwriting we've also had um, bonsai gardening we've had cooking we've had uh, art therapy we've had yoga I mean just the list goes on and on just all from local community community members volunteering their time um, because we do live in a really arts rich area so it's, it's just for fifth grade currently. Um, for a while, we haven't been able to do this because of COVID. Um, we did have the afternoon session was our high schoolers actually performing here in the auditorium for our um, elementary students. Um, a variety of talents, almost like a talent show, but then with a little Q&A opportunity for the students to ask you know, how they got interested, how they learned their craft, and it's just all in all a really great experience. They get t-shirts for the event through the student council. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So it's usually in spring of fifth grade, so it's like a nice end to the end to elementary school event. Quick question. Uh, first, first, thank you, and I'll say a little bit more. But second, on, on, do you have any sense of how many students participate in high school sort of elective performances, things outside of classes. Because my overwhelming opinion when I started, first started 
being introduced to the Haldane District was that it's an incredible number of people who participate in sports. Mm-hmm. And there's an incredible number of people who participate in the arts in some mm-hmm. way. And I just, I have a sense that the entire community comes together to do that. But I was wondering whether off the top of your head you had some sort of idea. Um, I don't have an exact number. The cast sizes definitely change depending on, um, you know, the show that they're doing. Yeah. Um, so I don't have a sense of in terms of like percentages of, mm-hmm. of how many students are participating, but it does seem, you know, for a small school, like it's a really high number. I will also say along with that, a lot of students do, you know, more than one thing here at Haldane. That's one of the great things about a small school, but it's also something that stretches our students a little thin at times. Right. Um, but yeah, there's high, I'd say very high level of participation and it's, it's nice to see that students are doing so many different things. I know I went to a big school and it was kind of like everyone chose their avenue, but here at Haldane, we really have a, yeah. a culture where you can do sports and you can do the play and that's, that's encouraged, that's yeah. a great thing. Um, but I don't have exact that's numbers a, off the top of my head. I can get them to you if you want. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, but uh, the last thing I'd say is like that part of participating in the community, I think is super, super mm-hmm. important, super valuable, especially mm-hmm. you can dip in and out of things in a very easy way that mm-hmm. you, I went like similarly went to a very large high school. You picked your lane and there was mm-hmm. no getting out of it for better, or for worse. But I would say that um, not only are we fortunate that the community of students participates, but mm-hmm. that the community in general, and Corey is here, so I will give her a direct shout out, but all of the people who support the Haldane Arts Boosters and now the Haldane Arts Alliance, both through their activities, you see the list on every single program of everybody who has participated. Mm-hmm. And I know certainly Miss Sniffen has painted some sets and probably everybody else in the room has done likewise outside mm-hmm. of there. So it's a great, I appreciate it every single time we see it. So thank you, thank you thank all. You. And yes, big shout out to Corey, our former uh, Arts Alliance president. Okay, any more questions for Mr. McGordy? Thank you so much for being here. Thank Thank you. Thank you so much. Good to see you. So we're going into our communication from the public. We'll just take a moment to uh, note, since it's a, uh, a new process for us, that our first public comment section is for comments uh, that surround the special presentation. Uh, For example, if anyone wanted to comment on the arts update or uh, agenda items. So anything that is, you know, uh, on our docket that we're about to talk about, um, now would be the time to communicate. Okay. Oh, Corey, did you wanna? It is. It is public comment if you would like to comment on uh, the arts update or on something on our agenda. Very good. State your name, please, for the record. Corey Reisterer. Um, I just wanted to support everything that Dan so eloquently expressed, especially his recommendations to the board. Sounds like all of you are are aware of much of that. And I just want to add, too, for the arts department as a whole, staff retention and adding that point whatever it is and and kind of having that continuity is incredibly important for the program that we have and also making sure that some of those volunteer positions are either made into permanent positions or that you guarantee that you have volunteers with the technical abilities I'm looking at the booth up there um, that have the skills to be able to do it because otherwise it it, it's just not going to happen so um, thank you all I'm thrilled that there was an arts presentation here and um, good night Thank you. Okay, we're going into our information reports. So uh, first up, I will invite uh, Luke Perella to share his report with us. Sure. So, are currently on sale on my school box, so the and the show times are uh, December third, fourth, and fifth. So that weekend is when it's going to be taking place. Um, additionally, this week is College Week, so we're seeing many reps are coming through to to visit throughout the week, including DCC reps and Mount Saint Mary, which are actually doing instant decision. So I'll figure out uh, obviously that instantly and. As of now, we've had 139 early action, early decision applications have been submitted.
by the seniors, and then now we're continuing to uh, work on the the regular decision and the following deadline. So it's a good move. And then um, just the student council has been organizing for Thanksgiving and upcoming K through 12 food drive and. Every grade level has a different item that they're focusing on bringing in, and then that's going to be uh, ending by 11 or November 22nd. So we're working on that. So that's what I got. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Jen, if it's okay, I did uh, want to ask uh, after uh, Luke's presentation if Tim could actually go next, just because Tim had some slides he wanted to pull up in relation to an item that may be forthcoming for the board. So I don't. If it's okay with you, um, we'll go slightly out of order just by having Tim go before uh, Christine. Sure. All right, Mr. Mr. Walsh, Walsh, come on up. Keeping us on our toes. <laughs> some highlights from this previous month from the maintenance department. Um, we often talk about a lot of the, um, the things that we accomplished throughout the month, but I'd like to talk quickly about some of the training that took place this past yes. month. Um, and it was building upon the, the mandated training that Mr. Elder put out at the beginning of the year. Uh, we built upon that calendar for the maintenance personnel and we published a training calendar uh, for all personnel. We added about 15 additional trainings uh, for them to take throughout the course of the year. Um, it's through the GCN training platform it's about two per month that we asked uh, job specific training. It includes state mandated training, OSHA training, such as hazardous communications, uh, hearing protection program, as well as just general good practice training like fire extinguisher use, uh, professionalism, effective communication. Um, so we're gonna keep that calendar in place. Uh, people have been receptive to it and we'll do this on an annual basis uh, throughout the course. Uh, you know, as we progress, we'll just republish the calendar in, in upcoming years. In addition, uh, during superintendent's conference day, we also had a, a vendor come on site and teach CPR and AED training to our cleaner and cleaner drivers. We have 12 members of the staff now certified in CPR and AED usage. And these are members that are uh, both day shift and night shift. They're stationed throughout buildings. They work lunches, uh, they drive buses, they work extracurricular events. So having these members CPR and AED certified is certainly a, an added benefit uh, to the school district. Um, so transitioning slightly, I like, like to talk about up here on the board is our uh, current operations and maintenance uh, organizational structure. Um, this is how it currently stands. And if you notice in the upper left um, highlighted um, is a building maintenance mechanic exterior. This position is currently, uh, the incumbent is Anthony Stronconi. Tony will be retiring here in the next uh, couple, couple weeks. And providing that he's retiring gives us the opportunity to look at this position, see if it still uh, benefits uh, the district. And as we're reviewing here, you'll notice that it's now highlighted in green. This is the proposed um, organizational structure for January of 2022. Uh, when we look at the two positions, both head groundskeeper, which is proposed, as well as the uh, building maintenance mechanic, if you compare these positions, they're both similar in, in qualifications in terms of ye years of experience, in terms of supervisory experience required. And the primary difference between the two is the job duties that are required of the position. I feel that the head uh, groundskeeper, job description and job duties more aptly fit what is required of the position and what we'd be looking to have accomplished here on campus. So we're proposing that that change takes place here uh, within our department. And that's all that I have, unless there's any other questions. Um, and there's just to clarify. So you said that the uh, the change is 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 a change in jobs description. It's not a change necessarily in uh, salary requirements, or is it? The only set there has to be a new salary schedule developed uh, simply because there is not one currently in the CSEA contract for the head groundskeeper. Uh huh. Um, it would be similar to building maintenance mechanic, and the only difference is that we have like positions, some that are required of a CDL, some that are not required of a CDL, so that would be the only difference um, is if there's a CDL requirement for it or not. Very good. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Walsh? Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Jamin. Good evening. Um, you have a number of items from the elementary school on the 
memo, but a few I wanted to highlight was first, last year in the spring, our fifth graders had done a lot of research on what it required to become a certified wildlife habitat. And I don't think that the certification arrived before the end of the school year, but our space was uh, certified to be a wildlife habitat based on the additions that they put in the space that's outside of the art room if you head right out those doors. Um, so enough habitat for wildlife, enough sources of water, food, shelter, and such. Um, this fall, our fifth grade, new fifth graders have been researching the different spheres of the earth and are going to be adding their informational boards. They just arrived from Gray's Printing. So um, Mr. Walsh's team has lots of things on their agenda, but he and I will meet and find a way uh, to hang them and what is the best way to have them in the space adding information to what is there for the animals, for those who use the space to look at and learn from. So that's an exciting way that what started as one project is expanding and hopefully more years to come will continue to use it and expand on it and make it, make it their own um, as time goes on. Uh, I wanna update you on two of our long-term building goals. The first is our math curriculum, which we've been looking at and have started the process. So we've moved into a phase where over the summer, uh, Mr. Josh and I had looked at um, what curriculums were being used locally and what curriculums were highly rated on What Works Clearinghouse and Ed Reports and had narrowed it down to a selection of eight or nine curriculums that seemed to meet our overall need. We had a group of teachers that volunteered to meet with us on Superintendent's Conference Day and spend some time digging into their websites. Some of them we have some sample materials of, but looking at what is out there and how it relates to the criteria that were established by our instructional team over the course of last spring. So looking at what we have currently, what the teachers see as the strengths, where they've seen that they have to consistently supplement the curriculum and build things in um, that aren't part of the resources that we have. Um, and so identifying those strengths and weaknesses led to the criteria that we're looking at what else is out there. So at this point, we've narrowed it down to really three that seem to come out strong that we're gonna get more materials for and look at. Those three are big ideas in vision and bridges. Um, and we're moving into the next step of exploring those further and getting more information um, from, from uh, their materials to compare them to the criteria that we've set. The other was started prior to my coming here. The elementary school had started looking at the report cards and whether they met um, the building's needs, both from the teachers and from the parents. A survey had gone out to parents about report cards to gather their input. Um, teachers had been looking at how they worked for them uh, in their assessments. Since the last report card revision, the next generation science standards have come out. We've adopted new curricular resources that may approach the curriculum in different orders. Um, so right now, our teachers are looking at what the categories on the current report cards are, comparing it to the standards and the orders that they're approaching the material for the course of the year, and proposing um, whether some of them should stay the same, whether some should be removed, whether any should be added. Uh, and then in January, we're going to be having um, articulation meetings to make sure that there's common threads if the kindergartners narrowed it down to this, does that align with what the first graders are also highlighting? Not that they would be exactly the same, but they should flow into each other and those important concepts should cut across. So those are two big initiatives that are uh, taking a lot of time and work and our teachers are doing um, quite a bit to just reflect on, on both our math curriculum and how we assess students and report it to families. So thank you for all their work. Yes. Yep. So can you re restate the names of the three math curricula that you all are? Sure, so Big Ideas, which is the one that was recently adopted for the middle school. So that one, um, obviously the idea that there's then a good articulation between uh, puts that one um, on our, uh, high in our consideration. Envision, E-N-V-I-S-I-O-N, -S -S um, and Bridges. Envision isn't the new uh, so Envision is a little tricky. There's a couple of programs under them that uh, have different names. Okay. So Envision is the one that it references, but there's a few different resources. Thank you. Thanks. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay, Dr. Silky.
Good evening, everyone. Um, always happy to be here and have some of my most grateful moments when I'm up here at the podium and when I'm also listening to my colleagues highlight what is going on at Haldane. And just to add on to what um, Dan was sharing earlier, uh, in prom being prompted by Jessica Stein, our band teacher, I'm in touch with Allison Emig, the principal over at Garrison, and we're imagining a time after COVID where the Garrison band and the Haldane band might actually get to play together. So that's really something to look forward to. Um, also, you know, hearing Christine talk about faculty having the time to really dive deeply into curriculum. Um, having my faculty uh, work together today during a faculty meeting on looking at the curriculum overview. I was so happy to hear Dan say that the PE and the um, fine arts department are looking at a aligned uh, participation rubric. I mean, the, you know, that's the type of work that comes out of um, giving educators the time and space to dive into their, you know, deep thinking about their um, respective curricula. So. Um, excited about that. And October was a really fun and busy month. We wrapped up the literacy fair with the hard work of the PTA and our author visit. We, the sixth grade team, had a great team building trip to, uh, and wellness building trip to the Taconic Outdoor Education Center. And um, Heidi Gesson's seventh grade DCI section created the uh, first uh, edition of the Haldane Scoop, which is going to be a middle school quarterly newsletter, so lots going on there. We celebrated Red Ribbon Week, which is an annual um, uh, celebration to increase awareness on the dangers of um, substance abuse. And the middle school also is drawing to a close on our Fall into Teamwork um, theme, which is uh, part of our motto, school motto, how day middle school is true blue. Um, so we're going to be moving into a blizzard of responsibility, hopefully not also a blizzard in the weather um, for the next quarter. Thank you. You just gave Tim a heart attack. He was like a blizzard. No, not yet. Um, thank you. And, and Dan, thank you. Great, great job. Um, just a few things from my board reflection to, to highlight for you. Um, one of the things I'd like to talk about is volunteerism in the community. Um, we, Dan and I had a meeting earlier in the year with the local, local fire and EMT uh, organizations and Nick Falcone uh, from the EMT group here, Phillipstown Ambulance Corps, uh, had reached out in regards to trying to build and educate students uh, on the importance, one, of volunteerism, but the possibility of being an EMT. Um, and through that connection and discussion, we sent out a survey to the entire community about three weeks ago, looking to see if not only students, but any community members were interested in taking the coursework to become a certified EMT. Um, Dutchess Community College, along with Phillipstown Emergency Services, are looking to offer that course here. Um, so there's still a little bit of time if, if people are interested, um, and Nick will be following up with any interested community members uh, in, in taking that course. Um, in addition to that, another community partnership very important to the high school is the Putnam County Youth Bureau. And um, every year, the Putnam County Youth Bureau send over certified social workers to work with our high school students on becoming mentors. Um, and we have a mentor program that Scott Manny and Renee Curry run with fifth grade students. Um, so that mentorship and mentor program is up and running. In addition to that, Dr. Silky and I took some time this year to meet potentially, because that program has parameters where it's for fifth grade students and elementary only, um, we, we saw a need at expanding that into the middle school. Um, so some of our students who were trained through Putnam County, um, or in addition to other students interested in mentor program, we are aligning with um, students in the, the middle school. Um, so that's been a, a great addition um, for us. Um, you can see there some of the curriculum work that took place on Superintendent's Conference Day, and I just want to thank Josh 
um, for his partnership and work, work together in that. It's nice to have a curriculum person uh, to process and plan uh, that work together. So thank you for that, that Josh, and I'm sure he's gonna highlight a little bit more on that. But finally, my last thing is, um, it's that time of year where we fill out the paperwork for Seal of Biliteracy. And last year with COVID, so many, one, that was one of the things that just kinda got away from us. Um, so the deadline with New York State was December 1st, so I just need to thank Barbara Jennings and Nina Ortiz. Um, we filled out the application for the Seal of Biliteracy work and we sent it up to New York State today. So hopefully we'll be looking at um, some of our seniors this year receiving the Seal of Biliteracy upon graduation. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Niffin. Uh, Ms. Rounds. Hey, good evening. Um, so I wanted to share with the board tonight a lot of um, what is going on in the PPS department is uh, a good amount of sharing information and resources um, in many different areas, and, and I'm excited to talk about that. Um, this month we uh, had myself and Mrs. Grenant attended a workshop on dyslexia, and that resulted in us being able to come back and turnkey a lot of the information that we learned um, with the staff uh, Ms. Grenant has been working, uh, giving a series of workshops on early literacy and strategies and working with struggling readers um, and giving a lot of um, information to our teachers uh, that can be used right in the classroom right away in terms of interventions. Um, Peggy shared a resource with me that I was able to look at and uh, again, quick targeted interventions, free. So I was able to share that with um, our literacy specialist as well as Jen to say look this over as part of the research that we're doing. Um, and this is all part of our department goal to explore programs and strategies for struggling readers. Uh, we're in the process of collecting all of this information and then sharing the information that we find valuable. Um, along those same lines of uh, bringing information back to the rest of our colleagues. Our counselors have been working for the last few years with a DBT consultant, dialectical behavior therapy consultant, who um, works with them monthly to keep the, uh, their, their development going in, in this area. And um, they were able to coordinate an after school staff development uh, where she will be providing to staff uh, quick coaching of students in distress. So this is just uh, a quick intervention that teachers can use if a student is in distress to get them back to class, um, to have it have a little, as little impact on the school day as possible until an appointment can be made for a longer session with one of the counselors. Um, so that'll be offered at the end of this month. Um, in addition, not in my board report today, we got to um, we got to meet with the secondary special ed department and uh, I've had a team, there's been a team of us within the department attending uh, transition workshops for post-secondary and best practices in, in what we should be implementing for students as they transition out of high school into the world of work or college. And uh, we were able to share a lot of information today with uh, the rest of the special education faculty at the high school level in terms of best practices. So as I said, I'm just pleased to see all of our uh, faculty and staff Staff, sharing information amongst each other, collecting resources, sharing those resource, resources, and having rich discussion around um, the work that they're doing. Um, and just finally, this Friday, our Learning Differences Committee will be having the first meeting. Uh, I, I expect it to be a small meeting. Teresa Lagerman is the contact person, but it is in person, so I think that there, there's a limited number of um, individuals that'll be able to attend at the Butterfield Library, uh, but it will be an opportunity for our faculty and our parents, uh, a few of our parents, to get together and discuss uh, areas related to special education and learning differences. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, Mr. Elders. Good evening, everybody. Um, I did want to just talk a little bit about our superintendent's conference day, which took place on November 2nd. And uh, rather than just kind of talk about the, the what of took place, I just want to talk a little bit about the how and how that day was organized and, and came to be. Um, 
in the teaching profession, there's a, a reflective process that's very well known, which is called the plan, teach, reflect, and apply process. And simply as you plan your lessons, you teach those lessons in front of your class, you spend time thinking about what worked, what did not work, that's the reflection, and you apply those reflections, and then you plan, and then you teach, and you apply, and you just, the cycle keeps going and going. Um, and as Ms. Sniffen had uh, uh, alluded to a little bit earlier, I think that the super Superintendent's Conference Day, not only on November 2nd, but at the beginning of, the, uh, of August 31st and September 1st, was really the implementation of that model at a much broader le uh, level, particularly when you're talking about adult learning. And um, really, the success of this day, uh, I feel like, is founded on the work that preceded me being here. Um, you know, that took place over the strategic coherence planning, and then obviously the work that was done last year uh, by my colleagues when school was, uh, uh, you know, and very disrupted, but kept the work moving forward. And so after our superintendent's conference days at the beginning of the year, we went through this reflective process, uh, not only as an administrative group, but also talking with teacher leaders and talking uh, and using uh, areas like the Haldane Curriculum Council to kind of offer what those reflections are uh, and thinking about how we might plan the November 2nd uh, conference day. And so I think when we looked at the schedule of what we put out, it was very reflective of that process, right? We had a, a morning session, which was um, facilitated really as a common K-12 focus of everyone in the district, kind of focusing on the same thing, which is the curriculum articulation process. And then the afternoon really resulted in uh, buildings being able to, to offer really targeted ways that they continued some of that work, but also really worked on some very strategic work that they were doing in their own individual buildings. And so I wanted to highlight that a little bit because even after the September, uh, excuse me, the November 2nd day, we continued this reflective process. You know, the administration got together and, and we talked about what we felt went well and what did not work well or what we need to continue to do. Um, we've engaged uh, some teachers in those conversations and then at our last Haldane Curriculum Council meeting, which is made up of uh, department heads and teacher leaders within the district, we spent a significant amount of that time reflecting on that process also of that day and thinking about what the next, next steps are. And so I highlight this process or this thinking pattern of, of how we operate um, because I think when you have this collaborative reflective process, uh, it creates shared ownership of success within the district um, and also results in some very meaningful targeted professional development and really maximizing uh, what those days are for. Great. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank you. Mr. Cowan. Good evening, Dr. Bernanti, members of the board. It's good to see you folks this evening. Um, tonight I'd like to, uh, or in a moment, I'd like to mention the fall athletes who earned all league and all section honors. Uh, but before I do, I'd like to say congratulations to all of our fall sports teams. Um, our athletes did a tremendous job this year. The time uh, that they give to their sports, the effort, um, our student athletes demonstrated great character, uh, great sportsmanship, and I'm very proud of all of our fall athletes. Um, but I would like to um, get into some of the specific players from our teams that were awarded all league and all section, starting with girls soccer. Our girls soccer team finished as section one class C finalists. And there are four players who were um, voted by other coaches in the league to be all league. And that is Madison Chiera, Bianca Hermanchin, Ruby Poses, and Chloe Rowe. So excellent job um, to those girls soccer players. Our girls tennis team had a great season this year and have three uh, players from their team that were nominated and, and selected to be all league. And that's Myreed O'Hara, Ellen O'Hara, and Betsy McBride. Our girls volleyball team competed in the section one tournament and the coaches in, in our league um, voted for Megan Toman to be all league for volleyball. Both our boys and girls cross country teams won the section one championship uh, for cross country, and both teams competed in the state championships this past Saturday in Binghamton, as Dr. Benanti mentioned earlier. Uh, many of the, the runners from both the boys and girls team achieved their personal uh, records in Binghamton, which was excellent. The uh, boys runners for all league is Luke Perella, John Kisslinger, and the honorable mention was Conrad White. And from our girls team, all league, Eloise Pearsall, Celia Drury, Helen Nichols, and the honorable mentions were Andrea Vasconcelos and Kira Shanahan. Our boys soccer team were also section one class C finalists. We have a few players that were, um, who earned all league, Ryan Enwong, Matt Silhavi, Max Westfall. 
Uh, we have an all section, honorable mention, Ronan Keiter. He also won all league. And we have um, all section, William Sniffen, who also was named the league D MV, uh, MVP and had also um, earned all league honors. And our coach for the boys team, Coach Ahmed Dwidar, was voted as coach of the year uh, for League D boys soccer. Um, our football team is still alive, and, and the football coaches meeting is actually tomorrow night to choose our football players that would be all league and all section. Uh, we play up in Plattsburgh this Friday, which will be very exciting. And uh, really, I would just like to say congratulations to all the fall teams again, and thank our parents and community uh, for all the support that you gave us this fall. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, we're going into consent agenda minutes. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. These are minutes from the November 2nd meeting. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, consent agenda financial. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, consent agenda personnel. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're going into new business, and before we uh, go through the items, I'd like to make a motion to strike number three from the agenda. May I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so going to item number one, the CSE CPSC recommendations. Ms. Platt. Resolve that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the recommendations of the Committees on Special Education and Preschool Special Education as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The uh, Information Technology Audit Corrective Action Plan. Ms. Platt. Be it resolved that Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby accepts the OSC Information Technology Audit and approves the corrective action plan. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Did you want to make I any may, comments? If I uh, may, Jen. Thank you. I just wanted to note, uh, as the board's uh, aware, as you've received this information uh, prior, uh, there were two key findings from the Comptroller's Office report, uh, or I'm sorry, audit, of our information technology uh, systems, uh, one related to uh, unneeded network user accounts uh, being uh, still enabled, uh, and the second uh, also was related to user accounts and, and uh, administrative permissions that were still enabled. So uh, these were recommendations or findings that were very technical in nature, so they're, they're easy to, to fix. Uh, that being said, over the last uh, two, three months, uh, our team has really sat with uh, these findings and recommendations as well as uh, in using them as an opportunity to review all of our processes and procedures related to information uh, technology and in particular information uh, security uh, in our district, which is something, as you've likely read, has begun to impact uh, many districts uh, in our area. So. Um, uh, we're appreciative of any opportunity that we have uh, for an independent audit of our systems and processes. Uh, we've expressed as such to the Comptroller's Office, and um, you'll see attached to the uh, corrective action plan uh, the, what we're doing to f uh, fix these uh, problems, but I think more importantly, we're using this as an opportunity really to uh, examine all of our processes and procedures, even those that didn't fall under the scope of the Comptroller's Audit. Uh, and lastly, I'll just apologize if I was uh, distracted before. I didn't see the attachments on the agenda, so I was uh, communicating with one of our district staff just to make sure that they were there. They were in executive content. I'm in the public view, so I apologize before I was on my phone uh, just making sure that they were there. <laughs> I see the, um, the corrective action plan in public content. Yes, they were moved. Oh, in oh the very last good. Five okay, minutes. okay. <laughs> Real time moving agenda. Yes. Um, okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay, so we're going to item number four. This is the superintendent's evaluation. Uh, Peggy mentioned it as something we would be discussing this meeting. Um, and so I turn it to Peggy to just talk us through our next steps. Yeah, so I haven't written up the document that I've written up in the past, but I will revise that and share it with everybody. Um, but it's gonna say exactly what I'm saying now, which is the plan is for the board to meet in executive session um, before our next meeting, which is on December 7th. I actually found out just the other day that I won't be traveling for work in December, so I'll be here in person. Um, so we'll meet afterwards, and the plan is just to come. Uh, when I share the dates via an email, I'll also just reshare the super value, superintendent's um, evaluation document so that you have it. But really the purpose of this mid-year eva informal evaluation process is uh, typically what we do is uh, just uh, identify what kinds of questions we might have for Dr. Banate, particularly ref um, in terms of the district goals um, and anything else, uh, share those with him in advance and then meet for uh, after our December 17th, before after our Dece December 17th meeting um, to have a conversation about those. Um, that's what we've done in the past and I think that'll serve for this year. Um, and that's really it. So uh, the board will await a, an email from you, but we're looking at executive sessions on the 14th and the 21st. On the, I'm on, sorry, the 7th on the 7th and the 21st. And on the 21st, on yes. the 7th and 20, and on the 21st. Mm -hmm. And time to be determined. Did you want to determine that? In the I moment? mean, I don't know. We can go ahead and do it now. I mean, I think it's everyone can do at this point. It used to be that doing executive sessions before the meeting was difficult. I'm actually trying to. Well, we have people who are working. Um, oh, you know what? So what it is, this is how it's going to have to work. So on the, it's on the 7th, we could do it beforehand if that works for everybody. On the 21st, it will have to be after the meeting because Jen, Phil, and I are having a policy committee meeting before the board meeting. So I just want to make sure that exec session before the meeting on the 7th works for everybody. 6 p.m.? 6 p.m.? 6 p.m.? 7 Yep. Good for you, Maggie. Yep. We could, all, we, could, we, could all, we could also do it afterwards. I mean, it, it could be easier. It might be better just to do it after the meeting because we don't know if we need a whole hour. Shall we just do it after the meeting on the 7th? Yeah, easier. Right? And it will also, it will definitely be after the meeting on the 21st because Phil, Jen, and I are meeting as a policy committee before the meeting on the 21st. Okay, so post meeting execs on the 7th and the 21st to discuss the evaluation. Or is there a problem with the 21st? I'm likely to be out of town on the 21st. So oh, you we may are. need to put. Do we want to do this at the first meeting in December then? You mean January? The, the, the meeting with Dr. Bernante? In, in January. January. Yeah, in January. First meeting in January. Sure. Does that work for you, Phil? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Great. I didn't realize that. Sorry. No, that's okay. That's new news. No, no that works. That works. Okay. Good. So now we, I don't have like, now Jen, Phil, and I don't have a four-hour meeting on the 21st. <laughs> no complaints. No complaints there. Okay. Very good. And Peggy will include that, include that, those dates and times in your email if you don't mind. Yes. Would you, yes. Thank you. I think I didn't hear you, but so to write them out and send it like in I've email, done in the past. Just, yes, yes thank I will do you that. so much. And Make sure now I won't have to revise it because I will know what to put in it correctly the first time. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on to the budget calendar. This is a draft. Um, this isn't something we are um, approving at this meeting. This is just uh, here for our review. Is there anything different than usual, Phil, that you'd like to point out, or is it pretty standard? I believe it's pretty standard. Okay. I think Anne would agree. Anne, yes, okay. Yes, I have Anne's head. Looking forward to our budget uh, beginning. Uh, okay, so going into communication from the public, as a note, this is our now our catch-all communication, so anybody can say anything to us about district matters. Um, is there any communication from the public? Okay, going into board committee. Oh, oh. come, please. Hi, for the record, I'm Jen Hall. 
record, Corey Wister again. Um, since I'm here, um, I just wanted to let the board know that I've watched quite a few of your um, board meetings on video. <laughs> it's a lot easier that way. Um, and I just wanted to speak very briefly to equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, I'm gratified to know that a lot of these discussions are happening now, but I'm also not gratified that I feel like I've been a broken record for years at this podium before the board when it comes to students with disabilities. And I simply urge the board to look very closely at EDI and look at where it is at Haldane diversity exists, where we are failing our students in terms of equity, and what exactly that term inclusion truly means to the board. There have been lots of things bandied about over the years, and we know for a fact that not all students are here in the building being educated. Haldane still sends a lot of students out of district. What does inclusion truly mean to this school district? And I would add, I know there's federal funds coming, right? Exciting. <laughs> um, think about that in that context. You know, Think about it as you do your internal reviews and reports. Um, and just think deeply about what this means. And now I'll stop talking. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Any other communication from the public? OK, very good. Going to the board committee reports, the policy committee update. We actually have an update yeah, we to did share. Have an update. It's very so exciting. we do have an update. And I actually have something I want to bring up based on what I read in the most recent onboard that Phil, Jen, and I haven't had a chance to discuss. But I think it's appropriate for me to bring it up here. Okay. So I think if you took a look at our minutes, you can definitely see what we accomplished at our first meeting. Um, we have decided to commit to six meetings a year. Those meetings will be, I think, an hour and a half each. Um, we've set up a, a schedule for how, uh, how many pages of the uh, manual we want to read for each meeting. Reading that number of pages is in addition to doing the ongoing review of the um, policy updates that we get from Erie, Boses, Erie One Boses. Um, so, I mean, I think if you read the minutes, that's all there. So I kind of, that was just a little bit of a recap. What's not in there and what I want us to think about, and we can talk about it again the next time we have one of these policy uh, updates, is um, if you read the most recent on board, uh, I think it was the most recent on board, there was actually an article about p policies and how policies are an opportunity to encourage um, community engagement. And it made me think about a couple of things. So if, if, the, if as the policy committee, we are doing this ongoing policy review, I guess one of the things we decided uh, as the policy committee is that rather than have Erie BOCES update our policy manual every single time we review a new policy, we would wait and have them do it once a year when they do our annual po uh, uh, policy manual update. The exception would be any policies that have a, a deadline by which they need to be implemented. So we'll be engaged in this ongoing process of reviewing recommendations from Erie One, of reviewing the existing policies in the manual, but our plan is not to send it back to Erie to update the policy manual except for once a year during that annual manual audit. So then the question, when I was reading this article, came to me, well, like, so then what's the best way to, to involve the board in these, especially when we're reviewing the policies that Erie BOCES sends us? And so what I'd like to suggest is that even though we're going to have Erie 1 officially update the policy manual only once a year during this annual uh, manual audit, that as the committee reviews and makes decisions about policies, we go ahead and bring them to the board for a first read, which would mean that we're actually sort of reviewing them also as a board over the course of the year. That would also allow, instead of us dumping 20 policies on the board just once a year, it would also it would give the board the opportunity to read them more thoroughly, reflect on them more thoroughly, and it would also give us the opportunity in having these initial readings to present them to the community. 
um, one at a time. And I mean, I think if you look at the, some of the policies that we even want to talk about, it won't be ready right away, but there's a policy on smoking and cannabis use that, you know, I think the, you know, the, the, the community may want to weigh in on. I don't expect that we're going to have a draft of our diversity, equity, and inclusion policy for a while, but once that is ready, that's certainly going to be an important um, policy for us to bring in front of the community. So that's, that's my thinking. So. I think that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds great. I think so, I think so too. Because we were sort of talking about how to do it, and we were, th and, and the committee meeting, we were like, oh, we'll just bring it at once. But I, I really think that, that um, that article gave me an opportunity to reflect and think a little bit about the process. So I think what we'll probably want to do is just articulate that in our next meeting so that it gets reflected in the minutes as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope I didn't spring that on you unnecessarily, but I think, didn't think it was going to be like super, super controversial. So I didn't. No, I think that sounds good. What do you think? Oh, is, that, is that good? Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, again, by reading these policies as we sort of consider them, I think it will pro provide opportunities for, for folks to weigh in um, and, and be engaged to the extent that they want to. Great. So stay tuned. You'll be getting some policies and some first readings coming your way. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Westchester Putnam School Boards Association update. I will share two things. Um, do you guys all get the New York State Council of the Superintendents, School Superintendents, that, did I say that right, NISCUS, mm -hmm. the, um, their advocacy updates? Mm -hmm. Do you guys all get those? Yeah. yeah, so Westchester Putt looks at those and uses them as like um, inspiration for advocacy. And um, the recent one that was sent out was all about uh, teacher certifications and finding these multiple pathways for teacher certifications. Um, for people who are joining teaching as a second career, people who are going back into teaching, people who are switching certification areas, uh, trying to advocate for making that just all a little bit more possible. So Westchester Putt is trying to work with um, NISCUS to create like a joint advocacy um, platform. So that's something that they're working on. And um, you guys all get those town call um, recaps that I send you. So I'll just invite any of you. I know I, I on occasion, try to tell somebody to go, but <laughs> there are like terrible times, like Tuesday at 12, which I can never go to. But if anybody ever wants to attend one of those calls on Haldane's behalf, you know, it does not have to be the board president. It can be anybody. So um, if anybody's interested, you have that time free. If you want to just register yourself, you can, or if you want to touch base with me and I can show you how to do it if you're not sure. Um, so that Haldane can be represented on those calls. I think that would be great. Um, you know, they're just, they just happen monthly, so it's not that big of a commitment. So that is all I have to say about that. Um, are there any board reflections to share? No? Okay. Dr. Benante, do you have any final thoughts? No final thoughts. Thank you, Jen. Okay, well then I'll make a motion to adjourn. May I have a second, please? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> I dare one of you to ever oppose that. Uh, great. Thank you very much, everybody.